Hey, Internet. Hey, YouTube. I'm on my laptop right now in the fucking rental. My, uh, my Canon battery is actually charging on the USB thing, so it's probably going to be grainy as fuck, but I don't care. This laptop screen has, uh, tilting it now. The laptop screen probably has, like, the lowest resolution HP camera they can get. You know, it's a Walmart laptop, so whatever. Anyway, I can see myself on the screen. Full size. Wow, fuck. Having a bad hair, dude. Time for a shampoo. Shower, shave, and shampoo. So, uh, here's what I'm gonna talk. Let me turn the, fuck, turn that radio down. Thanks. I'm not really much of a radio person, you know. I don't hardly ever listen to that shit. But you know, anyway, so what could I? <laughs> Got like another 45 minutes before I'm gonna go turn this car in and go to the uh, place. So I'm gonna talk about. Um, I was thinking about this today as I just ate at this uh, falafel place here. Saw a married couple there, saw a couple couples there actually, and as you guys know, Jimmy the man is single, and I've been like forever single for a very long time, like um, like almost 10 years, probably more than that actually, you know, I used to be married, I did the married life thing, the, the Homer Simpson thing, and the one thing that I realized by observing, like, not only just myself, but I mean other couples who are like still, you know, sticking it out and shit like that in public, um, it's very, uh, there's pros and cons. How about that? I'll put it to you this way. There's pros and cons. I actually do feel like, um, a little bit inadequate, especially after, uh, like after doing some of my races and events and sports and stuff like that. And I see couples and they hug and they congratulate and they're all lovey dovey and shit like that. That shit breaks my heart, you know, cause I wish I had that, but I, that's the positive side, you know? But the negative sides, there are, like, extreme negatives. Like, fuck. The main difference that I realize in being single and being married is that when you're single, you have, like, an extra, mm, I would say, like, an extra 10, 10 or 11 hours in the day to go and do you, to go and do what's important to you. Now, while married, you should be able to main, you, you should maintain this, but I think if you are a good partner, spouse, or whatever... It's in your best interest to take a few hours out of your own life every day and devote them to your partner and helping them do whatever or whatever, you know, within reasonable means, of course. But my experience is I've, I've given way too many hours, days, years, decades of my life, uh, you know, to somebody that's not even trying, you know, or someone that's not improving or their condition's not changing or they're getting worse is the more you do for them. And in the meantime, you're getting depleted. So the lesson that I've learned, I've learned so many fucking lessons, you know. But mostly, uh, relationships are draining. Good, whether they're good or bad, okay? Whether you have the best fucking partner in the world, it still usurps, meaning depletes, your time. And since, like, all of us are mortal beings and shit, we're dying gradually as our heartbeats uh, go, whatever. I, I read that it, uh, if you live until age 82, that means you'll be alive for roughly 30,000 days, right? So... You can't really do much to get any of them days back, so it's in your best interest to take care of yourself and to, uh, you understand what I'm saying? To just, uh, whatever, live longer and prosper and all that bullshit. So, uh, oh my god, here's something you don't see every day, wow. There's a hooker walking down the street by the airport and she has my attention. <laughs> I'll put the camera on when she walks by. But uh, that's LA for you. Man, but like married life is some shit. It's, uh, I just don't like how, how much the shit just like depletes. You know what I'm saying? It might actually be a tranny. Who knows? They're fucking tall. You guys see out the side window? I don't know. Any girl that's taller than me generally is a no no. You know, tall girls are a challenge, but I think that might have been a fucking dude. This is California after all. <laughs> I ain't got no money for you. I'm going to Thailand. <laughs> so anyway, like, yeah, man, fucking married life, dude. It's, uh, fuck. When I look at married couples, okay, in public, most of, I'm talking about the men here, most of the men, they have this thing called the dad bod going on, the big, you know, round Homer Simpson belly. I had it myself at some point. You know, I'd lost that shit. But, uh, you know, it's like, most married men are living very unhealthy lives, just from observation. You know, they're they're fucking um, 
not to mention, you know, their health, their health is, their health is declining. Their finances are declining. The years of, the years on the clock left on their life are declining. And most men, most married men are not happy unless they're like newly, freshly married or whatever. You know, it's beyond year one or two. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Stop killing yourself slowly. <laughs> that shit is like, wow. But, you know, the programming that people give you, you know, to, you know, the, this society is not set up for married couples to, to be happy. It, it's very imbalanced. It's, uh, it's the reason why I'm not married right now. You know, I don't know if I'll ever get married again. It's not, it's not even like a, it's not even like a distant goal on my checklist or shit right now. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's something because you realize that the dynamic of, the dynamic of being, getting married basically means that you're willing to trade and sacrifice everything in your life that you have worked for, your time, your energy, your future dreams, goals. You know, if you really, truly, really, 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 really care about someone and that whole I love you baby sense or whatever, you'll, you'll do it in a heartbeat. You'll drop everything in a heartbeat. You'll sign everything away in a heartbeat. If you truly, truly, truly care on that high of a level about someone. My challenge is that uh, I do care about people this much, and I know what my weakness is. I know that I have like a big heart and a giving heart and all that shit, so I can't just put myself out there for someone to just fucking roll me over again. I can't do it. I'm not starting over again at 40 years old. Sorry. Not going to happen. Girl, you want a house? You got to buy your own house. You want a Mercedes? You got to buy your own Mercedes. Sorry. I am not investing... Here's the thing here, man. And this is a great example in Los Angeles as all these fucking cars go by and I'm in a rental right now. But I mean, United States of America is very much a autoerotic society. It's not like this in the rest of the world. People do not fantasize and drool about having cars and getting a newer, cooler car and the next one and the next one and the next one. This is like in a very much an American thing. I'm not as, even as a guy that used to race cars and shit, I was in so many car clubs and all this shit. I had like a hundred fucking cars. I'm not into them at all. I'm sitting in a fucking Kia minivan right now, for Christ's sakes. You know, I don't care anymore. This thing here that I'm sitting in, it is just a metal box on fucking wheels. And it doesn't mean anything to me other than it gets me around. You know, I don't, there, there's no status. There's no honor or glory. It's going to sit in the parking lot, just like all these other fucking cars out there. In the parking lot. Can you see that or no? I'm bad at aiming the screen. But whatever. Any parking lot, you know? There's literally a fucking million dollars of fucking vehicle assets and nobody cares. The people who are working for them are inside the building or they're digging holes in the street or they're doing some other fucking job in a cubicle to pay for these motherfucking things. And I can't understand why, pe for the life of me, why people would trade the hours or so many hours of their life for a metal box on wheels. It's not going to be worth anything in five years. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Do you do you think this car thing that you're... You think it's going to last forever? Do you think it's going to last for five years? Ten years? Twenty years? I don't know. Now, I do drive a 20-year-old car myself. It's $800. But I'm saying, I mean, you guys who are paying these... I was one of those once guys that would buy $50,000 cars and shit without even thinking twice about it. Will I do that now? No. Because fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money, you know. You can buy land, real estate, and all kinds of other shit. But more importantly, you can spend your money on your health and your experiences. You can travel. You can have high quality nutrition and food and vitamins. You understand what I'm saying? These things are far more important than a car that's going to end up getting crushed into fucking soda cans within a matter of a couple years, or as soon as somebody wrecks it or taps it at more than five miles an hour. It makes no sense at all to invest yourself. Or it makes no sense to work for a car. A car should work for you. This is like working for a telephone or working for the faucet or something in your bathroom. Like some some shit you shouldn't devote like excess hours to. If somebody told you that you had to go and work 300 hours to purchase a water hose for your house or something stupid, you'd be like, fuck that. I don't need the water hose that bad. 300 hours, I could, no, you know. Now, it's a silly example, but I mean, same shit, if not worse. Now, what if that water hose got taxed with interest and this and that and fees and all kinds of shit? 
and fines, and what if every time you tried to use this water hose, the police came to cite you and arrest you or some other shit or something like that? I mean, if you if you realize exactly how much of a liability that a car is, not just not just even if somebody gives you a free fucking car for free, it's still going to cost you money to put gas in the motherfucker. It's going to cost money to wash it. It's going to cost money to fix it whenever it fucks up or if someone smashes into it or you crash into a fucking curb or pole or some stupid shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's uh, it's like having something that will... <laughs> I have an uncle that's a mechanic. He used to work on Porsches, right? He told me a story about this guy. He told he said that he said to him, uh, "Having a Porsche in your garage is like having a burglar in your garage that robs you at night while you're sleeping, literally. Because when those motherfuckers break down, the bill is nine, ten, eleven thousand dollars. That's just to get it back on the road. That's not to make it any faster or superior or better. That's just to like take it apart and fix the little fucking donut that fucked up and put it back together. You know, so." Yeah, a car will rob you, <laughs> or say a Porsche will rob you at night while you're sleeping. Why would you want to have something that robs you while you're sleeping? Wouldn't you rather have something that could work for you? Wouldn't you rather just fucking walk or run or have a healthier body? That's the way I look at things right now. I look at things like my, um, this person looks like a beat up ass car. I'm looking at a beat up, there's a bait black, black girl, I know she's a baby mama, she got her kid in the car, but she's got a beat up fucking dent and she's smoking it right now, I see her right there, you just gotta see the dent on the door, oh, I used to have an old C-Class like that actually, silver too, but she's, somebody smashed it, god damn, that's a big hole on that thing, you guys see that? No, it's gone, fuck. Everyone in LA and Cali has like destroyed fucking cars, body damage, demolition, derby, like they've been doing the fucking 12 hour enduro race and shit, 12 hours of Sebring and shit. So, uh, yeah, enough ranting about cars. Fuck cars, you know. They are what they are, you know. I think I buy, like, maybe $10 of gas every two weeks or something. I don't... I don't fuck that shit. Knowing what I know now at almost age 40, I would say to everyone to uh, just invest in, invest in your own nutrition. My body is the new race car. Premium nutrition. Workout, 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 run, weights, kit cardio. Do all that shit. You might not even want a fucking car once you uh, start running as much as I do. Really. I figured, like, and I don't know if this clip thing is like, does it cut clips every 10 seconds, 10 minutes? I'll just keep rolling. Fuck it. Um, cars and working out, man. This is like. I calculated that I spend four and a half hours a day just for my hobby or my main thing called running, okay? That means I gotta, you can't just like start run. well I'm dressed for it right now, but I mean most of the time it takes like an hour to prep just for me to go for a run. I've got to take my vitamins, refuel, take a protein shake or some shit like that, shower, whatever, get my shit on and go out there and warm up and do my thing. So then I'm on to hour number two and I'll run for another hour. Right after that, I gotta recover for an hour. Basically, that means I gotta refuel, have a shower, hot tub, whatever, eat something, recover. Then, like another hour, I can almost, I can probably like do some task or something, and then I'm okay. So really, it's four hours out of my day just to devote to my running, practice, and another hour and a half in the evening actually for hit cardio workout. So it takes up a lot of my fucking time, a lot, a lot, a lot of my fucking time. But I enjoy it, and it's something I'm doing voluntarily. But I bring I bring all this up and I calculated the hours just to figure out this that that running is actually a really 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 expensive hobby almost as expensive as auto racing though not quite on that level but if my body is literally the car and I'm always having to buy shoes 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 and there's race entry fees and I got to travel here and there for the events and just the the intense every single day training like you know some people say they go to the gym and they work out like oh, i'm gonna go to the gym three times a week four times a week whatever i run and work out and do my hit cardio and my bench press and all that shit every single fucking day you know i don't do the bench if i don't have if i'm traveling or whatever but i still run and do the routine you know it's like you, there are no off days you know it's like when you're doing shit on the athletic level it's it's what you do and most people who don't run or compete and shit like that they don't understand what it entails to be a winner 
or a competitive athlete. Most people are not this. So that's what I do. That's what my interest is. And I do think that uh, if I were still married and all that shit, I would not have pursued my passions and interests and hobbies and things that interested me, you know, because I had all these things going for me prior to getting married and all that shit and getting back into them now. It's like, I just want to say that it feels really fucking good. It feels good to have my body back, to lose the weight and get the muscle and all six pack and all that bullshit. And it just feels good to be me again. I feel more comfortable in my own skin. I like to think I'm getting smarter. <laughs> you know, I'm reading more books and all that bullshit and I have more time to study and just do shit just to do me. So if you're in a, if you're in a relationship and you feel like you don't have any time for yourself or you don't have time to do what's important to you or you have or or like in my case like I'd have to like wake up at 2 or 3 in the morning when the whole house is sleeping and work on the internet or do my projects and exercise and all kind of shit like that. It's ridiculous. Why should I have to wake up that early in the morning when everyone's sleeping just to go and be me? If you're like that, you're a prisoner in your own fucking house. No wonder you're stressed out. No wonder you're getting fat. No wonder you can't think straight. And no wonder your bills are just fucking skyrocketing because you're living with somebody who doesn't give a fuck about money because they never actually had to work for it in their own life. You know, that's my experience for real. So if you have a partner with an inequitable person, it's like one of the worst things you could do for yourself in life. In life, it's one of the worst things you could do. So the best thing that you can do is to just get back in your own skin. You know, that doesn't mean that you have to like go and break up with the person you're with or any of that, but you do have to set some boundaries and make some time for yourself, but you're not even going to, you're not even going to be yourself anymore. You're just going to be like a fucking robot to the other person and they're not going to like you anymore either. They'll probably abuse you and beat the shit out of you and shit like that as with my case. So it's like, what are you going to do? You really don't have to do nothing. You know, you probably can hit the back button and play another video. I don't care, but I'm going to fucking China. And if I was married, I probably wouldn't be doing that. I wouldn't have the money to do it. I wouldn't have the time. I'd be getting all the nags and nags and nags. Why? It's my life. You can come if you want to, motherfucker. The ticket's only 500 fucking dollars if you buy it way ahead of time. Just plan that shit out. So, <laughs> you know. Don't tell me no shit about, oh, I gotta go to work, I got this, I got that. You can plan around all that shit. Everyone always likes to make excuses. You know, nobody really wants to make shit happen other than the people that are going to do it. So if you're living life with somebody that always has to make excuses about why they can't do this or why they can't go there or why, 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 why shit is not possible, you don't need them kind of people around you because why, why put limitations on yourself? Nobody else is externally stopping you until you go out in the world and see they're actually physically stopping you from doing something. I've gotten that in, my, in a few instances or whatever. But generally, generally speaking, as long as you're not harming anyone, stealing from anyone, ripping anyone off or anything like that, most people don't give a fuck. People are preoccupied and pre-concerned with the affairs of their own household and their own body. Everybody got problems. That pretty girl that you're waiting to talk to, she got problems and her shit stinks and everything else, you know, she shits like everyone else, just like me. So that means that she's got bills and problems and she coughs and spits and shits and pisses and everything else that every other human does. So there's no reason to like idealize people, you know, there's no reason that anybody should even look up to me. I'm not anybody special. I'm fucking shimmy. The fuck? You know, I'm a university dropout. I'm a webmaster, actor, Porn star, racer, what do you want me to do? Hoverboard rider, distributor. <laughs> Holler, shout outs to my friends in Orlando for the white hoverboards. Wink, wink. <laughs> the truth too shall come to pass, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, this is this is life. This is uh, Life can actually be a really awesome thing if you have control over it. If you feel like somebody else has control over your routine or schedule, what you do, what you eat, what you consume, what you read, what you watch, what you, there's no reason for anybody else to regulate, uh, you know, especially in this modern day and age with all this fucking information on the internet or whatever, there's no need for anyone to regulate what the fuck you want to uh, do with your time, you know what I'm saying? 
Unless you're fucking up some shit for somebody else, it shouldn't really matter. Why do you care? Let people do their projects. Let people build their businesses. Encourage people to do whatever the fuck they're doing. You know, be happy they're not fucking with you. You people that don't like my channel, be happy I'm not fucking with you. You know what I'm saying? I could be doing that. I, obviously, I have the time to... If I have the idle time to sit in a motherfucking minivan while I wait for a fucking plane to leave and take me to China on fucking Jamin or whatever the fuck this airline is, starts with the letter X, you know, it's like, whatever, I'll hop on it. It's going, it's going, you know? But if I have the time to do all this shit, think about it. I could be fucking with every single one of you people if I wanted to, but I choose not to. Because there's no benefit to me, and I don't get enjoyment out of that. I, I do things for me. I do I do my experiences for me. I'm not going to like go go to specifically see anyone or any. I'm not going to like some big event or fucking. I'm not religious. I'm not going to no temples, churches, mosques, synagogues. None of that shit. I'm just going with no fucking plans. Literally, just me in a motherfucking backpack full of bandanas. And fucking running shoes and some shorts. And I brought my protein powder and BCAA powder with me. But yeah, man. What the fuck? Life's about exploring, adventuring. I'm doing the whole RPG quest thing here. And it's fun. You know, it'll be fun. So I can't wait to get to Asia. Uh, maybe I'll do some more of these, like, laptop videos if, the, if I play it back and it doesn't look grainy as fuck. I wonder about this thing. I really always prefer having a real camera, you know, so I can... I don't like... I don't like carrying a carrying a laptop around in a fucking car and all that shit. But anyway, it, 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 it is what it is, you know? I, I like seeing myself. So, uh, yeah. Fuck. I guess I should probably quit talking shit and go and return this car and go to the place. Yeah. So, I do hope that, uh... I hope you might have learned something from me. I'm, I'm talking... Realize that I'm talking a lot of shit about namely marriage, travel, relationships, uh whatever but this is these are the things that are on like the forefront of my mind when my mind is idle so i think that uh youtubers bloggers podcasters or whatever the thing that we have in common is we don't we all just push the record button deep and we just fucking let our brain spill out so that's what i'm doing here but i don't have uh you know it's all positive shit though you know what i'm saying i'm not not on no bullshit. So, anyway, let me go. I'm at the damn 22 minute mark talking that shit. <laughs> so, sorry for wasting too much of your time with uh, whatever. But maybe some people like to hear me rant, ramble, and talk. I don't fucking know. This is my life. This is my world. <sighs> you know, it's. Uh, I think it's kind of fun or kind of cool. But as you guys can see, I'm solo, solo, dolo. And there's nothing wrong with traveling solo. There's nothing wrong with being alone. Some people might think you're like a weirdo or some shit, but there's nothing wrong with it at all. Sometimes I prefer company, but a lot of times I prefer to be alone and just, you know, do my thing. Just realize if there were a girl sitting next to me in this passenger seat right now, I probably wouldn't be doing this show right now. And then some people would miss out on some three second, five second snippet of information that I offered. So there is some intrinsic benefit to society and the world as, as a whole when you do remain single or at least have the time for yourself to do shit that you feel like is important to you. I did shit that I feel like is important to me. I took care of myself. Well, every day I take care of myself, but you know, today, today specifically, I'm in LA, took my vitamins, woke up, went running, doing this car thing, and I'm hopping on the plane, all because it's been planned. You know what I'm saying? It's been planned way in advance. Most things, not everything, not all the small details, but most shit. You know what I'm saying? So... Because I've done that, that means I feel fulfilled. I'm not depressed. I'm not fat. I'm not angry. I'm not upset or vengeful or any any fucking uh, shit. I don't have any fucking... Um, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? Now there, now, there is some fuck niggas out there that are fucking with me, but they're not even on my mind right now. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? It's all good in the hood. So as long as I've got my stress level, like... It's never going to be at zero, but as long as I got it like way the fuck down here and my cortisol levels are like barely measurable, man, fuck y'all niggas, dog. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm jetting. I took care of myself. And because I took care of myself, I'm able to spit out this info to people who wouldn't ordinarily have it. Just consider that. Because I know for a fact, if I had a ring on my finger right now, I would not be doing this cast right now. Not if I were married to my ex-wife. Definitely not. Because... 
it would not work. <laughs> what are you doing that stupid show for? What are you? What are you? How much money does that make? Bah, 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 bah. Give me some money. <laughs> you know, that kind of shit, you know? And it, it could be the ex-wife. It could be girlfriends. It could be hoes. It could be anybody, any girl. It, it, it could be any distraction, actually. Girls will, girls are a great distraction. But if you're a YouTuber or a webmaster or a fucking internet guy where you got to fuck with a computer or do some shit to make some money, you can't have them around. You're not going to be able to make fucking all these fucking... I do like 20 videos in a day sometimes and work on my other adult websites and projects and shit too, which is really what I spend most of the time on. So it's like if someone usurps all my time and resources and energy and stresses me out and kills my creativity, how in the fuck do you think I'm going to forge a way for myself in the world as a creative person? Let's say that I pretend that I'm a motherfucking painter or some shit. You know, if I got a girlfriend that's giving me hell and I can't paint right that day. I'm not going to be a very good painter. I'll be an unemployed painter or a fucking street painter or a graffiti guy or some shit. So don't let anybody hinder you from uh, doing what you do best. That's what I'm saying. Whatever your natural abilities are. In my case, it would be running and webmastering and writing books and shit like that. But whatever your particular talents are, don't let anybody fucking crush them or tell you that they're stupid or not worthwhile or whatever. Because I don't go around doing that to people. I don't give a fuck if people do fucking knitting. Some people are into super religious, like they just want to read the Bible for eight fucking hours a day and shit. Whatever. You know, some people are JW, Jehovah Witnesses, and they bang on my door and talk that shit. Whatever. I don't, I actually talk to JWs, by the way. But it's like, I don't stomp on their shit and tell them, no, that's wrong. This is not the way you need to change. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. This is the way, this is the way to salvation. You got to get saved. You got to do this. Nor do I also take the womanly point of view and believe that there has to be a monetization aspect to everything that I do. You know, when you're married, your wife wants you to produce. At least mine did. She ex-wife, she wants me to make money, 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 money. Never enough fucking money. Never enough cars, never enough houses, never enough fucking bullshit food in your fucking deep freezer. Never satisfied. Amazing. Just fucking amazing. You know what I'm saying? Now look at where you're at right now. What did that get you? And I know you're watching this right now. So that's what makes me smile internally. You know what I'm saying? Let me talk about something else here too. Like I got, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm on a fucking roll. Oh, wow. It's like five o'clock now. All right. So, um... 27 minutes. Fuck it. Let it roll. Let it ride. I was going to start another file up, but let's, let's not get into that. All right. So let's talk about, um, this is, this is an interesting topic. Let's talk about married people, domestic violence. I'll talk about my own little personal story since I don't know of too many other people or whatever, but let's do a simple physics equation here. Now let's, uh, let's pretend that there's a woman that's 300 pounds. Okay. Now, let's pretend that there's a man that's 600 pounds. Like, we think, we think of pro wrestler Andre the Giant or something, or just go and Google 600-pound man. Maybe like Hambone from Atlanta, the, the fat guy that can't get out of his bed or some shit like that. But a 600-pound man. Now, let's assume this 600-pound man gets up and charges across the living room floor and with all their might blindsides and slaps the shit out of this 300-pound uh, woman. 600-pound man slaps a 300-pound woman, blindsided, pow, off guard, not expecting it, doesn't see it coming, knocks them to the floor, knocks them back off their chair, they hit their head on the floor, all kind of shit like that. Now, if this happened, you somebody would probably call 911, domestic violence, assault and battery, all kinds of shit like that, right? And the physics of just a man being violent with a woman that's fucking twice the fucking mass of the woman. Imagine that. It's like Juggernaut from the X-Men going up to uh, fucking charge across the room and slap shit out of Storm. Or fucking Jubilee or some shit like that. If you were talking about cartoons, right? From the X-Men. So, my personal story is not far from that. You know, my ex-wife was like 300-something fucking pounds. And uh, this happened in 2010 or 11. I looked it up. 
here's a, this is this is a great backdrop for a story, right? So here we go. We fly into Cal. I, I'm I'm in the I'm in the Dominican Republic at the time. I fly into California for Christmas to visit my mom. I fly the kids and my ex-wife from Canada, California, whatever. They're there for like two weeks. We try to, you know, I'm happy to see my kids and shit. Some uh, argument ensues about Christmas decorations between Geneva and my mom, for whatever reason. Although she's the Canadian, not that that matters, but she's the guest in someone else's house. She's the guest in my mother's house, the guest in my aunt's house, you know. So anytime you're the guest in someone's house, you should obviously respect them. You shouldn't go around moving shit around and trying to make the place your own because it's not your area and you have no boundaries going you know, if some motherfucker walks in my house and just starts rearranging shit, I'm just going to be like, hey, what the fuck? What are you doing? Go fix your own shit. This is my area. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't territorial like this because this wasn't my house. It was my mom's house. But some argument basically came up uh, around Christmas time about you know, my mom and her moving Christmas decorations and shit. Shit that doesn't matter or whatever. So some argument, there, those two are arguing or whatever. And I just got tired of it. My head's hurt. I'm like, I can't get, wait to get back on a fucking plane, go back to my own place in DR and all that shit. And I say, Jesus, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you're in my mom's house. Just bitch, please. Like, shut up. You're, this is not your area. This is not your, this is not your property. You don't have any right or say here. What are you doing? You're a guest. Be happy. Shut up and eat the food and go home. What the fuck? Got no home training at all. Who the fuck raised you? You know your mama raised you better than that. Come on. <laughs> you know, so at, at this point, bitch, please, I say, bitch, please, not yelling or whatever. I say, bitch, please. And I meant it. And I'll say it again. Bitch, please. You don't come to my mama's house, moving shit around, raising hell with her. And, you know, what the fuck? So this woman gets up. I don't expect her to. She gets up, charges across the room and slaps the shit out of me as I'm sitting on an ottoman. You know, and I weigh 150 pounds at the particular time. I, I just demonstrated the 300 and 600 pound thing to be like a fucking physics equation or whatever. Someone with twice my mass. I weighed exactly 155 back then, you know? I weigh 155, she's 300 plus. She runs across the fucking room and just pow, Charlie Brown fucking slaps me or whatever, right? Now, most niggas are laughing. You're probably laughing right now. It is funny for about maybe 1.3 seconds or whatever until you realize that I'm, I'm could have been fucking killed because I'm a little nigger and she's a big bitch. And you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers don't realize that when you slap or knock somebody down, it's not the fucking impact or whatever that hurts them. It's the fucking your noggin hitting the fucking ground, that secondary impact or whatever that hits you or whatever, you know? <laughs> kind of like getting hit by a car or something. It's not the bumper that hits you to get hurt. It's when your ass hits the ground going 40 miles an hour that when you get hurt or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But I bring this up to be like, domestic violence against men must be okay. It's okay to slap the shit out of me and laugh about it and play it off like nothing ever happened. And it's okay to call the police and act like a victim and do what they call DARVO, deny and reverse victim and offender. That's CSI kind of shit. Go and study that or whatever. I've learned and I've done a lot of studying about 10 hours a day on this shit. And I'm like, man, my ex-wife is a fucking psychopath. She's got narcissistic personality disorder. She's physically violent, manically depressed. Ah! <laughs> and I dodged a fucking bullet because I'm not living in the house with her anymore. You know what I'm saying? But anytime that you have somebody like that in your life, you've got to jettison them that they're going to fucking kill you. And they've proven to, they've proven that they don't care about you, that they're going to fucking abuse you and do some shit that could probably kill you and not even realize it or care and be like, Oh, sorry, my bad. Well, he's dead. He's, oh, my bad. I could be fucking dead. And I could do it to show. <laughs> Real fucking funny, you know? So one thing, another thing I'll bring up here too, there are two so-called, so-called people that thought they were my friends or professed to be my friends and, uh, that thing there. in studying people, here's something that's really interesting that came up this too, and this has nothing to do with my ex-wife at this point, I'm talking about two other individuals, uh, Grace and Dorian Peters, two people that were friends of mine, Grace for about 20-something years, and this district attorney lawyer, fuck-ass nigger, named uh, Dorian Peters, some African-American attorney that harasses me all the time, follows me to other countries, read the other shows and listen. You'll, you'll, you'll learn about this guy. And I'm not letting up on him because he's a bitch-ass nigger and he works for the fucking OJJDP ICAC. He's a Chivato, snitch, fuck nigger. You know what I'm saying? And he gets on the fucking internet and tries to rile me up all the fucking time. Hey, nigger, what are you doing? You still alive? Blah, 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 blah. Nigger, 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 nigger. I'm like, all right, motherfucker. You're going to have your day, you know, and you know how you're going to get your day. 
Sun Tzu in the Art of War, he says that uh, there are five types of generals. You know what I'm saying? I read books, nigga. <laughs> Those you cannot kill, you can shame. Those, this goes like, everyone, these five generals have a weakness. Every, everyone's got a fucking weakness. And I'm going to hit a nigga at his weakest point. You know what I'm saying? So if you're dependent on being a motherfucking district attorney and a lawyer and all this shit with the bar and all that shit in the state of California, and you're going to brothels in the Dominican Republic with me, Shimmy, the internet pornographer, you know what I'm saying? What does that say about your character? You're going to go and uh, harass me over Rina, the 19-year-old Native American runaway from New Mexico? You know what I'm saying? All over some snitch shit? Look up the video in the 2257. Is she a runaway? Did I exploit her? I paid her $600 cash. She's counting money on the fucking bed. Signed the 2257 model releases. Shemmy does shit legal, right? So this nigger's still doing it for the grant money. He's still harassing me. Still trying to entrap. LAX, thinking about getting into escorting, you know, 300 pound Asian hookers. My life is weird. It's fucking weird. And you motherfuckers might think that I'm talking some shit and that I'm hyper on some shit, but this is factual. Look up my files. I got fucking a federal task force on my ass. OJJDPICAC in Indian country. Google my name. Look it up. B4PP.PDF. All that other shit. Fake fake sex trafficking in Indian country for government grant money, all that shit. That's that nigger, right? So that's why I talk so harshly about him. You're on some fuck shit. You don't even, boy, you don't even know who you're fucking with. You know what I'm saying? If I have time to fuck with you in China and Thailand and un basically unlimited time on my side on this little internet, think about that, motherfucker. Think about it. The bombs have not started to drop yet. The digital bombs, nigga. Go and Google your name <laughs> in about a year or two, or even 10. <laughs> you're going to fuck with a webmaster, you're going to fuck with a webmaster. And I'm going to show you what webmasters do to people like that. So anyway, um, I'm going to tell you about this. This is how you can determine who your friends are, all right? If you tell somebody a tragic story, all right, like me, like, hey, man, this crazy woman, whatever, she did domestic bitch crazy, this, if someone la if if someone laughs about your spouse hitting you or whatever, and they laugh for more than like a second or two, but they're going on it for like, ah, ha, ha, they're just slapping their knee and shit, and they're going at it for like fucking 10 seconds or more, they're a narcissist. They're not your friends. They like seeing you in pain. They like seeing me in pain. Oh, it's like, oh, you like to see me suffer. You like to see me hurting. I understand that. All right. Well, you don't need to be around me, and I've got my eye on you. You know what I'm saying? Why? I don't like to see anybody in pain unless you fucked with me. If you fucked with me, I like to see you in severe pain. I want to fucking see you disabled and almost fucking dead if you want me dead. You know what I'm saying? That's just basic survival. You know what I'm saying? But I don't go around provoking people. This is the difference. <laughs> if you provoke me and I find out you are fucking with me, my nigga, you are done. D O. Oh my God, look at this hole in the street there. Jesus. She, she must see me sitting in the car. That's why she's here. <laughs> she's on the curb. Anyway. So yeah, I'm at the 37 minute mark. But look up that nigga though, dog. He fuck niggers, dog. Same thing with Grace. Yo, if you're, you're laughing about my misfortune. You're laughing that somebody can fucking physically abuse me that's twice my size in mass. I'll never go and fuck with a bitch that's twice my size anymore anyway. I don't need that. And you know, in nature, like, the woman is generally 30% smaller than the male in all respects. So you would think that somebody with all these handicaps that has fucking, you know what I'm saying? All kinds of shit. What's going on? Oh, man, there's girls walking on the street. That guy's fucking with the hooker walking on the street. She's gone now. saying like she can't stay here she can't walk here life in LA while they're fighting in the street right now I should put this laptop down <laughs> Jesus fuck what a life LA California life is hard man anyway thanks for listening to me uh, more this will be like part two continued yeah fuck niggers and all that shit continued but life does go on man this is this is a uh, this is very interesting. Oh, this guy's going to fucking counselor or some shit now. Maybe they're a couple. I don't know. Fuck it. Anyway, I'm out of here. Signing out. Thank you for watching The Shimmy Show. <laughs>